every one of our games, we always put so much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. The freedom to experience both the exciting planets and the quiet ones. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. I think what is cool about this whole system that we, we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore. Our system builds a planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together a block of terrain. After that, we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter, ore and plants to pick up. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that the Vesta is known for. Aggressive creatures have been disrupting our experiments. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. So even if your friends were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. It's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet, whether you want to explore and see what you can find, harvest resources and be on your way, or simply take in the views. With the help of your scanner, you'll chart the uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. If you have the skills, you can even figure out that certain creatures and plants, you can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. When we were concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. We didn't want alien monsters. We wanted native wildlife, something you've never seen before. When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves, all that light is calculated in real time through the atmosphere. Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic, to use lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic. After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. And the habitat modules come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different purposes. You can even live in them. Assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. Something cool we have this time is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between on-foot building or you can now use a top-down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves. So that way you can really plan your structures and what the overall feel of your outpost is. And then when you're on your feet, you can really decorate and fine tune things much easier.
Add crafting and research stations in your outpost to utilize any resources you find or already have. Mod your weapons to adapt them to your playstyle. Different weapon sights and scopes. Larger magazines. A selection of grips and barrels. Different ammunition like explosive rounds. All you stealth players out there will surely need a suppressor. You can also choose to go hands-on with melee weapons. I think it's always a delicate balance between like what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. And I think we sort of err on the side of like, what's fun for the player? With Starfield, we've completely overhauled our combat. It's more dynamic, the animations are more fluid. It just feels great. We probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than <laughs> I want to say any other game we've done before. There's a lot of variety. Upgraded gear is just one of the many factors to pay attention to when engaging in combat. You may need to switch things up based on your environment. Gravity is different for each planet, and boost packs are excellent for getting around. And for giving you an edge in combat. Sometimes you'll even feel like you're flying. Zero gravity environments pose a different challenge. Firing a ballistic weapon in zero G will actually push you backwards. Energy weapons, on the other hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. We also have mag weapons. These are high-powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own two fists, or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns, or maybe you prefer something bigger. Starfield's got you covered. This is Freestar Collective Space. The capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. The Stone Root Inn is an Aquila City fixture. A ranger relies on judgment and intuition to do what's best for the people. Neon started out as a fishing platform but is now known throughout the settled systems as a pleasure city where almost anything goes. If you've got morality issues, this definitely isn't the job for you. Ryujin is hiring the best and brightest of today for our future tomorrow. Everyone has been chewed up and ground up by Neon. Try not to get yourself killed, all right? Challenges become increasingly difficult as you work your way to higher ranks. With our five different skill trees and four ranks per skill, there's a lot to choose from. 
I like the Xeno sociology skill because it lets you mind control aliens. Boost pack out of the gate. I'm boost pack and everywhere. I like maxing out my physical tree so I can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat. That one's a lot of fun. Invest in the skills that suit your play style. I'm very much a stealth player. So I'm out there pickpocketing everyone. A favorite part about being stealthy is slowly creeping through vents like you're in a movie and then jumping out and springing on people. Whenever possible, I like to talk my way through situations. This area's off limits. Fine, I'll issue you an access card. I'm more of a run and gun player. I like doing the death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. I like blowing stuff up. We're putting you in the cockpit of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything. And that is really cool for us as developers. Spaceflight should be exciting and dangerous. And you should feel like you're in complete control every step of the way. We've extended that sense of control to ship combat. It's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons. It's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Boosting power to your engines will make your ship faster. Powering up the grab drives will shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. And moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight. You should always be on your toes because you're not alone out there. Unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target. After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can always turn any ship that engages you into scrap. but you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. Once you've taken control of an enemy ship, it's yours. Add it to your fleet and retrieve it at any spaceport. But space is way more than fighting for your life. Just like when you're planet side, there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Like these massive star yards. Walk the halls, talk to the crew, maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship, one worthy of you. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship, like the UC Vigilance. Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. There are plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. You can hail any ship you come across to trade, swap info, or maybe even commit an act of piracy. Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go like the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. I'm going to board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them 
you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people as quickly as possible. Each companion comes with their own valuable skills for your ships and outposts, as well as unique quest lines. Eventually, some friendships might blossom into romance. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone except you. And if you're looking for a little extra help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any room on your ship for someone like me? You'll also meet potential crew members out in the world. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. Assign crew to your ship or outposts and their unique skills will affect how they run. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. He's designed around the, the core basics of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. You might die. I still want to give it almost a humanoid personality, so I elongated the limbs. This tends to make him feel more human-like and give him a little personality. It is a shame. Exploration requires so much bloodshed. Using the ship building tools and crew selection features in Starfield, you'll be able to build and captain the ship of your dreams. And now, let's take to the sky. the last true explorers in the galaxy, and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. The artifact, if you could place it on the table here. Oh my god, look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled Help system. The United Colonies even get your UC citizenship? New Atlantis isn't the only city within the United Colonies. The city of Sidonia on Mars to this day serves as the largest mining facility for the United Colonies. The great serpent hungers. All heathens shall be made dust in time. A new face. Is this the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile? They think the galaxy is theirs. They are wrong. It belongs to the Crimson Fleet. It always has. In Starfield, we're pushing our cities and settlements further than we ever have before. It's all there, waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. So, ready to get out there? You've got Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier and adventurer, now Constellation's leader. Matteo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel, the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege. And Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellation's financier. Anything goes as long as you have the money. There's also Vlad, the ex-pirate, Sam Coe, the former space cowboy, and Barrett. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What's out there? 
These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. As to what they are, what they're building. You'll be part of solving that puzzle now. So, you found something? The new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? The artifact you found appears to be one of many, scattered across the galaxy. If we can find more, we can unlock their secrets. Beautiful, isn't it? The man who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. Of course, the Settle Systems is full of groups with other priorities. That's the Crimson Fleet! Everybody get ready! The Fleet doesn't follow the rules. Agree to work for UCC Steph. Together, we take down these cutthroat pirates. We're not just here to shoot the bad guys. We're peacekeepers. We protect the people of the Free Star Collective. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, no one quits. The only way out is death. The path ahead may be dangerous. But we are not stopping. Most Dusties don't even make it this far. Because whatever lies at the end of this road, will change humanity forever. According to the scanners, the abandoned research facility is in this direction. of the Crimson Fleet are using the facility.
some strangers might be looking for a little human connection in the darkness of space. Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. Then, realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're... human. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That DNA is so present here. It's in our random encounters, it's in our handcrafted quests, and it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. There are over a thousand planets out there just waiting for you to visit. We want you to feel like explorers, breaking ground on new planets, exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel this sense of awe and wonder, and sometimes a little fear. We're giving you a massive playground and a ton of toys and just setting you free. Starfield is our first new universe in over 25 years, but it's still a Bethesda RPG through and through, where you step into a new world and you get that feeling of unlimited possibilities. But this time, it's not just one world. It's over a thousand worlds. Because the choice of where to go, it's not ours, it's yours. And it wasn't until now that we had the technology to create it. From the rocks at your feet, to the mountains in the distance, to the people and creatures that live in these worlds. That isn't just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes, you can visit it too. We realistically simulate the galaxy around you. Our next-generation lighting model uses real-time global illumination to light the world based on the type of star and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. We also have an all-new animation system. And of course, you can play it in third person, and you can play it in first person. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently in this game, given its scale. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. You can collect resources, do a mission, and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected.
We do love stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up. And you can view all that in your data menu. This is the hub for everything you're doing, from your skills to your ship, your missions, and your inventory. We love to pack a ton of detail in every object, from all of your weapons, to spacesuits, to food. We just obsess over the details, and food, we obsess over food. When you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vasco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. And he can even say your name. Let's head out. Space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another character or home you can make all your own. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship. And hire a crew to keep it up and running. And it all starts in spaceports. Every spaceport has a ship technician where you can purchase, sell, and modify ships. Anything I can help you with? Maybe you start off with a speedy fighter that's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. And you have two ways to do that. You can quickly upgrade individual systems like your weapons or shields, or you can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Here you can change anything from the systems to the look and layout. Adding a new habitat module can give you more room for crew. Adding cowling can change your ship's overall silhouette. An improved grav drive allows for longer distance space jumps. You can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. The parts you choose to build with don't just affect your ship's stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds, mess halls, and control rooms. Our modified Frontier is a practical ship, but with a little creativity, your ship can look like almost anything you want. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch a bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used, worn, and lived in. All righty. What's the plan, Captain? This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big. And it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. And you will need to upgrade your ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system where we can find the city of New Atlantis. Welcome to UC Space. Maintain your current course while we scan your ship's cargo. Scan complete. You are cleared for landing at New Atlantis.
it's our most flexible yet. You can customize all the elements of how you look. You'll pick a background that gives you three starting skills. It says here you spend some time as a diplomat. Having a way with words might prove useful. There are optional traits, and these come with unique advantages and disadvantages. But it's not just in how you can look, but in how your character plays and develops. The skill system combines the best from our previous games, and you can unlock new skills as you level up, and then you rank those skills up by using them and completing challenges. And there's deep crafting systems, from running research projects with the resources you find, to crafting weapon mods needed to survive. And you can build your own outposts. These act as a home away from home for survival and resource generation. You can choose where and how to build each one, and you can hire characters you meet to keep it up and running. But that's not all. You can even build your own spaceships. You can choose crew members. And yes, you can completely customize the look and layout. There's loads of different modules, ship manufacturers, and more. I have to say, it's so cool. We just absolutely love this. They say, the wonder is, not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now, part of our family. What you've found, it's the key to unlocking everything. We reach your Constellation. This is all we've been working towards. We've come to the beginning of humanity's final journey. Prepare for departure. Graviton loop array is full. Check. Your space lane is clear. That's why we're here. Main engines go. Ignition. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are so for launch. one of our planets, Jemison. You can land in New Atlantis, but you can also land and explore anywhere on the planet. And it's not just this planet, it's all the planets in the system. From barren but resource-heavy ice balls to Goldilocks planets with life. And not just this system, but over a hundred systems. Over 1,000 planets, all open 
for you to explore. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. Humanity has always hunted for knowledge in the unknown. The wonder is, not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What's out there? You're part of Constellation now. Part of our family. We do not fully understand all that is at work here. No finer group in the stars to be unraveling this mystery. I'll follow you from here on out, Captain. Grab jump is ready. I love this part. These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. Another great secret the universe is asking us to unravel. Human settlements throughout the galaxy could be at risk. We are not stopping. Whatever lies at the end of this road will change humanity forever. This is where we belong.